Pelicans no. and the Jazz. And again, during the anthem, both teams locking arms, taking the knee together, an extraordinary display of unity. It was reported pregame that Zion would play in short bursts, and that's what he did. Watch him here, overpowering Royce O'Neal. And one hits the free throw. Second quarter, watch Zion gets the defender on his hip, rolling on an alley oop from Lonzo Ball. Six of eight from the floor for Zion. Pelicans up 12 at the half. Zion had seven in that first half. Third quarter, Pelicans are up seven. Zion, they leave him alone in the corner and he makes him pay. Coming down the baseline, Drew Holiday finds him. And now watch this pass. Look at Zion. Oh, the little left hand behind the back to Lonzo. He dishes it there. Pelicans up by eight after three. Fourth quarter, the Pelicans lead is six. Remember, these games are important for New Orleans. Zion, the spin, he makes it, and it's good. Zion would score 13 in 15 minutes, but that's it. He would sit the final seven minutes, 19 seconds, and in that time, the lead would get away entirely. We're tied. 14 seconds left. Down they go. Rudy Gobert, of all people, is going to wind up with two free throws to put the Jazz ahead. He'd make them both. He would score 14. So the Jazz up two. Last chance, Pelicans. Zion not on the floor. Brandon Ingram is going to take the shot. And it's not going to go. The lead gets away in its entirely. The Jazz hang on to win by a deuce. They weren't holding me back. Uh, I was, yeah, I did want to be out there, but um, you know, we're just working my way back into my flow. That's all it is. It is frustrating, but it's not so frustrating because you know, like I could easily, they could probably not even let me play, but you know, I'm able to play, so I'm gonna do as much as I can while I'm out there. The Pelicans were actually minus 16 with Zion on the floor. His worst career plus minus entering the day. The Pelicans were outscoring teams by over six points a game with him on the floor, which is easily the best mark on the team. But what we're going to come away from here, and again, Doris Burke, I'll start with you, is going to be the minutes and the way they played him. What did you think of it last night? Well, I said yesterday morning on a radio uh, interview Golik, uh, on Golik and Wingo that I did not believe that they would play him for long stretches because I think that they are taking the long view here. I know this frustrates fans. Shaquille O'Neal didn't get into the playoffs until his second year. LeBron James in his third year. And I understand in completely different circumstances, but if you're taking the long view of his career and he hasn't had that much opportunity for five on five, I think I would have deployed him in exactly the same way. Now, you can make the case that distribute his minutes so that at the final seven minutes and 19 seconds when you're in a possession game, he's on the floor, but I'm going to be overly cautious with him as well. Timmy Legs, we all just saw the Last Dance films this summer where they handled Jordan very similarly in his second year when he came back from injury. What do you think of the way the Pelicans are handling it and what impact do you think it has on their chance of getting into the playoffs? Well, they said, Greeny, they've short burst. I think they redefined the word short. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a guy <laughs> be put on that kind of restriction where you're talking about three to four minutes at a time for four different stretches. Here's, what, here's what's puzzling to me. You talk about coming back from an injury. He's already come back from the injury. He did that already. So he didn't come down to Orlando hurt. He came down in the same situation as everybody else. He's a healthy player. I understand he missed some time by leaving the bubble. But for me, what I don't understand, is this really the best thing to maintain his health, to play a guy for three or four minutes, then go sit down for 15, 20 minutes of real time, do it again at the start of the second quarter, and then think about how much real time elapsed from when he left the game in the second quarter till the start of the second half, and then you put him out there for three minutes again. I understand if you want to play the guy 15 to 20 minutes, I just think you're better off playing him maybe two seven-minute stretches and let him really get into a rhythm and a flow. I don't think that's the best thing for any player to be playing three to four minutes at a time and do that four different times. That has to be incredibly difficult on your body to get loose, get a sweat, and then go sit down as soon as you start to get into a rhythm. So I was shocked that the stretches were that short, maybe not as much that he played 15, 20 minutes, but I thought he was going to play at least 20 and you get him out there for six, seven minutes at a time and let his body start to get into somewhat of a rhythm. So I was a little bit surprised by that. Yeah, you bring up a couple of interesting points, including that all we heard during the, the time off here was that he was in great shape, that he had a chance to work out in ways that other people had right. not. Big Perk, if, if he's frustrated and it's hard to imagine that he isn't to at least some degree, what advice would you give him? If he called you up for your, your sage wisdom and counsel, what advice would you give a young, frustrated player who wants to be out on the floor? Well, just stay patient, young fella. But but here's the thing, Greeny. We are overreacting. I think Zion is going to get more minutes. Just think about it. He was not supposed to play. The Pelicans didn't want him to play last night. Now, if Zion would have been in the bubble and he wouldn't have to, and he wouldn't have to left because of family issues, 
he would have played a lot of minutes because he would have been able to build up by playing in scrimmages. Remember, he missed training camp. He missed those scrimmages. So the, uh, the Pelicans are taking it lightly. But I'm pretty sure when we look in about another three games in, his minutes are going to be ramped up. The only reason that he played 15 minutes last night was because that he left the bubble and didn't have a training camp in those scrimmages to build up. But here's my question. When are you going to let him out the cage? When is the right time to start playing him the right amount of minutes or letting him loose? Because they need him in order to make the playoffs. He's healthy. He's 20 years old. So when is the right time? You, you can't low manage his minutes for the rest of his career. Exactly. And, and so, Doris, very quickly, I'll leave it on that thought. Do you believe the Pelicans, and I have a suit bet with Jalen riding on this, so I admit I'm sort of, <laughs> I have a vested interest in this. Do you believe the Pelicans will get into the playoffs? Oh, boy, not if they continue to play him 15 minutes. That's it. I mean, that's <laughs> and it. I, I made, it's, it's simple. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's, it is, it's bringing me extraordinary frustration because I could win this bet with Jalen so easily. If they would leave him on the floor, that obviously <laughs> isn't their primary concern. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.